and welcome to Ars Electronica Home Delivery. Today, again, as every Tuesday, inside Future Lab, and I'm really ha happy to have one of the co directors from the Ars Electronica Future Lab here for this talk today, Hideaki Ogawa. Uh, and he will talk about his research topic, and I'm really interested in what he's doing. Honestly, to say, we don't know everything what the Future Lab is doing, so it's almost for us a good chance to get a little bit insight of what they are yeah. doing. So I'm really happy to have Hide here. Mm. And of course, you can post your questions mm. uh, on our YouTube channel, and we will make a short talk with questions and answers after the talk of Hide Ogawa. Mm -hmm. And today, it will uh, be a little bit going through parts of yes. our Ars Electronica Center. So and again, a new experiment for us, and hopefully everything will work properly. <laughs> Either this hopefully, is your stage, yeah. hopefully, so and I'm really looking forward. Yeah, thank you very much, Christoph. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, home delivery of Ars Electronica Center. I'm Hide Oga from Ars Electronica Future Lab. Today, I would like to take you to a quick but a special short guided tour of Art of Thinking. Uh, by the way, for everyone who are watching at this, uh, for you individually, what do, what do you think about art? What is art? Have you ever thought about it? Now, you know, the society and everything is getting quite complicated, as you realize. Uh, we notice uh, really uncertain situations. So what's going to be the hope, what's going to be the possibilities, what's going to be the new directions? So I believe art can be a catalyst to shape our society better. So in this, uh, as this philosophy, uh, our Sectonica, our Sectonica Center as well, and we, our Sectonica Future Lab, are proceeding uh, research, special research about how to apply art into our society, for our society. So the art of thinking is a process to understand our situations of complex, compli complicated situations and looking for the many directions, possibilities, and uh, envision the future. So that's the process of art of thinking. But uh, today uh, we have a wonderful setting like our Sectonica Center. As I'm guiding, you know, uh, my friends, my uh, partners, and also guests uh, from all over the world uh, to our Sectonica Center, I would like to take you to the such art thinking tour. Uh, welcome to the you know, our Sectonica Center. Probably uh, Christoph and the other people already explained about the concept of existing uh, our Sectonica Center. So the tema is navigating the future. So uh, look at this. There is one eye in front of you. Just uh, uh, follow me. So uh, you will see a kind of closed eye and opened. So first question from my side to you guys. So what this eye means? You are gazed, and, but you will find a small camera <laughs> below side. So it's very popular and uh, in a way familiar camera everywhere you can find. Maybe today in shopping or airport. Yes, it's surveillance camera. So actually this piece the title of this project is What a Ghost Dreams of. What's a ghost now? Are you still believing a normal ghost? <laughs> or do you find a new ghost in the digital, you know, digital age? I'm taking you to this very in interesting mixture of the, you know, our technological society by introducing this piece. So uh, actually this piece, What a Ghost Dreams, was made by me. <laughs> so I'm not just a co-director, but I'm an artist. So artist is always thinking about the, you know, our society. We are 
always thinking of what we can do. So now you are facing to this surveillance camera and we are observed. Okay, let's go one more step. So after first experience, what's happening? Just please remind the name of the piece, what a ghost dreams of. So if you go down to the main exhibition, so you'll see next screen, then what's this? So actually, this is a perspective that the camera I watched. So now the eye is gazing at Christoph, but you can see kind of computer vision information through the screen. He himself is now tracked. So then you will see the real time kind of, you know, processing of computer vision. Actually, this is a function based on face recognition. If human's face is recognized in this system, the eye is taking the faces. So uh, nowadays, you know, looking around the world, so uh, some countries are introducing new systems. It's like a social credit and to really uh, identify the persons. So what are we doing uh, what in the daily lives and what are they doing? So this is actually the situation of our society, of information society. So then let's go down next steps. So as I said, the ghost, so he is dreaming. Actually, look at here, the, you'll see many faces created by the ghost. The ghost is actually generating not existing faces on the earth from the input from the uh, uh, surveillance camera. So hopefully you might be finding someone like Christoph was some uh, communicators. Actually, uh, the faces are in real time uh, by using uh, open source uh, AI algorithm called StyleGun. Uh, the AI is generating non-existing human faces. So you'll see some interesting persons so then, so the AI is generating uh, such uh, contents. So very interesting thing of AI is some people might not realize the power of AI yet, but AI can produce something not existing. This is really unbe unbelievable, isn't it? Because AI might be for you, AI, it's used for analyzing or something like this. But actually, AI can even take uh, over the, some areas of design. For example, designing car, designing objects. So by using such style gun system, uh, it can be uh, really uh, uh, creating non-existing artificial object. Let's go down. So then, again, what a ghost dream was. So the, the answer of the what's the ghost is you might realize the ghost is AI then so please come here here you'll see a face actually this is a face that the algorithm judge this is the most unique uh, face through the you know visitors so it's every day, constantly the face is uh, being changed. So this is, I would say, the face of the ghost <laughs> as of today. So as you realize, uh, you know, AI, what is AI doing? So the title says what a ghost dream was of. This case, in a way, I made the context but my message, why I wanted to make this piece was also raising a question com 
to the mirror of the what a ghost dreams of, which means what uh, we humans dreams of. So uh, that's my project. And uh, I introduce one of the example of art project like this. But uh, uh, you might realize what uh, art meaning in our Sectonica Center. Our art is a, not like a picture or a painting in the frame. Rather, we are talking about new frame and a new kind of mode uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to be experienced. So uh, just to uh, make clear a little bit, I, I really like these quotes uh, by John Maida. So what's the difference between design and art? Designers create solutions. As you saw camera or daily objects, uh, you know, it's designed for some purposes, right? So design is a very effective for such really, you know, uh, force to shape comfortability and also reasonable services to human. But on the other hand, artists create questions. So artists is always asking questions if this is the right way, because quite often, you know, we are suddenly uh, facing to the difficulties. We, even though we believe this is a true future, but suddenly we are asked to stop. Okay, where to go? So this case, uh, art is very effective for philosophy and visioning. So in our Sectonica Future Lab, we are researching about the latest role of art. So art thinking is a research and a key research to explore the applied art for our next society. So uh, as I described, design was forced to push some you know, really uh, ideas to the future, like this direction. But art can be a, like this compass so uh, in art thinking, we are offering people to experience many, many inspirations. And uh, also, uh, we are having our own compass. Then, let's go. So that's the general process of art thinking. Uh, comparing to traditional mode of uh, design and also so-called design thinking. Design thinking used to be very effective for product and service based on the some thema or issues by creating creative solutions. But uh, why don't we connect the power of art? Art can create vision and uh, philosophy for future and through creative questions. So by connecting both, you know, like this, I believe that we can uh, shape uh, really right themas, creative questions we say, then creative questions allow us to go to the proper direction. As Future Lab, what are we doing? So this art thinking research is a very holistic research, by the way. Uh, in this research, uh, we have always kind of three steps. And as fundamental research, we develop tools, environment, and process, and also new ways uh, of prototyping. But uh, if someone in is interested in uh, enjoying and participating in this art of thinking, uh, we are inviting the participant first, you know, to unlock your creative energies, to really search for creative questions individually. Then second, so future sketching for envisioning the future, but not just the thinking, next is doing. So it's vision modeling, so which means a prototyping so that's a very uh, central part of Future Lab, for instance. 
through this process, we have quite uh, many uh, interesting innovative projects with uh, you know, governmental partners, city, also uh, industry partners as well, as you can see now. So there are many interesting innovative research for envisioning the future together with different uh, stakeholders and partners, including CISM. So nowadays, maybe pretty difficult time for everyone, uh, but I believe, you know, art is maybe immunity, not just a quick medicine, unfortunately, but immunity is more important to survive for an uncertain society now, don't you think? So I would say art is immunity for future. So I hope you understand the general approach of art thinking. Today, I just picked up one you know, artistic project that I made, uh, but what I and the future labs are looking for is like a new opportunity to create your own compass and also action for envisioning the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hide, okay. for this <laughs> deep dive into art thinking. Yeah. Uh, we have some questions here from right, uh, yeah. our uh, visitors mm -hmm. in the uh, home delivery. Uh, Art thinking seems very important mm. approach to survive in the 21st century for everyone. But how can we learn it and access to it? What do you think? Yeah, well, th thanks for the great feedback <laughs> first. Well, um, you know, uh, there are some, you know, accesses uh, in our sectonica, I would say. First one is uh, <laughs> here. Of course, you know, our Sectonica Center is, I would say, first gate to enter to such, you know, future moments and to discuss the future. And the second one is every year in September, we have the international festival called our Sectonica Festival. So that's unbelievable, huge creative future, Amazon, I would say. The city of Linz is going to be the future. So then, so in the Amazon, you can really find many creative questions by exploring such big, you know, you know, place. And the uh, final one is, I would say, our Sectonica Future Lab. We are specialized for also consulting and also research collaboration. And uh, we are uh, also uh, providing the special, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, customized programs for our partners. So there are different levels of the accessibilities, but the main part that I would like to address is uh, art thinking is not like uh, just a learning or uh, like a consumable something. But uh, I always say art thinking is a fundamental attitude, you know, that we are acquiring and updating every day. So how to get to the first seat, I would recommend you to come to our Sektenka Center or our Sektenka Festival to get to the first, you know, first elements. Then afterwards, of course, you know, uh, our info trainer can give audience visitors the hint to continue to you know, uh, refresh the new compass, I would say. Then so Future Lab can be offering more, how to, uh, uh, you know, together <laughs> uh, kind of service in a way uh, to be thinking of innovative uh, kind of future together. So that's the different types of, uh, of accessibilities. So it's more a life learning process. process. Yes, question question of of life work. <laughs> life work and a question, question of, of the mindset. mindset. And uh, actually, uh, I sometimes say like it's uh, also, you know, uh, Montessori education for you know adults, <laughs> but uh, only not only for uh, kids, not only for adults, but not only for senior, but uh, for everyone, for people. I think uh, we can continue to learn about the way to adjust our compass. 
Uh, second question, uh, as some examples showed, uh, it sounds effective on also innovation for industries. Mm -hmm. So not only for yeah. the public, but also for industry partners. Do you have some interesting episodes in working with such industry partners? Yes, absolutely. As you saw a couple of footages, or if you are interested in, uh, please uh, look, look uh, on the website about Future Lab and also many uh, industry partners' projects. Um, yes, uh, we have tons of uh, episodes, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to say one specific episode, but uh, really a common kind of uh, episode is when uh, our partners, especially from industries, uh, come into us, they are very uh, facing to the difficulties. So they are really struggle uh, within the company and they don't have any uh, ideas to, in a way, reset the compass because company decides a compass. So when the partners are starting to come first, of course, they are kind of a little bit, you know, uh, kind of confused. But the step by step, they are starting to acquire the, uh, you know, position themselves to be a part of this innovative environment. Then so they will understand, oh, they need to do something by themselves. <laughs> then so we are helping though. So very interesting episode is uh, that such partners are really utilizing our sex tank as a home. You know, they are constantly coming and exchanging in a meeting as a part of a community and also uh, to accept the artistic thinking or artist to the com company or to the city, they are acquiring the new skills, you know, uh, to accept such people or such thinking. It needs a really tough negotiations, you, you, you can suppose, right? So they can be, uh, when they notice, they are becoming a catalyst to make kind of change or proposal for better society. So that's very interesting common kind of phenomenon, I would say, I observe in the past collaborations with many industries. So it's really an ongoing process. So it's not you come once as an industry partner, but to have really be open-minded. I think so, yeah. Uh, another question what we received is, uh, what are your latest challenges? <laughs> now in the exploration of our thinking? Yeah, it's a good question, to be honest. Uh, well, as I mentioned today, as I guided you guys, uh, I didn't explain clear method or something like this. Uh, to me, uh, I would like to first uh, really open this, you know, art thinking to many people who are interested in the, uh, you know, applied art. Uh, so how to, really uh, create such, you know, um, environment to exchange idea or practices of art thinking. I suppose, you know, uh, all over the world, you know, many people have already started such, you know, unique initiative. It might be not named like art thinking though. It might be called like future thinking. So there are many thinking, but uh, I would like to know about, uh, and also I would like to facilitate such a platform to exchange the uh, thinking and doing with practices. Second challenge is um, like uh, really uh, uh, applying art, not only for industries or science or conventional things. Can we apply art for government? <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, for example, now looking at these complicated situations, we realize the critical situations about media and governance. And also, uh, we citizens need to be acquire our own kind of, you know, survival, you know, techniques to really, uh, not just the spending of, of time, but uh, really uh, to cultivate time. 
So for doing so, I think not just, as I said, government, but uh, there are many opportunities to apply the art, as I spoke today, to many areas. Art education, art society, art philosophy, art whatever, you know. Uh, I think that's, uh, I think, uh, interesting challenges that I would like to tackle with uh, many uh, uh, collaborators. Wonderful. Uh, another interesting thing uh, for me especially is uh, you are also the head of Ars Electronica Japan. Yeah. Is there a difference between the way uh, Japanese uh, companies acting and European companies acting? Have you seen their differences in the approach of art or how um, they accept art? I think uh, it's d different, yeah. Well, uh, Japanese uh, industries are quite open, I would say, regarding the ac acceptance of art. But uh, uh, I think uh, as my feeling uh, also in Europe, uh, the, uh, they, uh, the, uh, they are really looking for the new ways and also they, you know, some people are definitely notice the power of art. Like uh, as you saw our past projects, you know, many uh, interesting innovative companies like uh, Mercedes, for instance, uh, they uh, really uh, have the futuristic insights to accept artistic thinking. So I think it's not just, you know, uh, specific area thinking, but uh, I would say kind of global uh, trend to uh, uh, utilize artistic thinking to uh, make, uh, you know, innovative uh, activities. But as a main point that uh, they shouldn't misunderstand is not, this is not only for uh, making uh, kind of, you know, products uh, which is sold well or something like this. This is not our job, right? So uh, what we uh, and also art can be uh, uh, contributing is to really asking carefully you know, fundamental meaning and, uh, you know, questions about the actions. So, which means uh, social, you know, society. What's the meaning of social value of the, you know, products, services, and the actions are uh, really nicely uh, uh, discussed. And uh, by using our Sectonica Center, uh, we are always happy because uh, here is, uh, I would say, uh, as my word, uh, culture infrastructure. So as uh, people are drinking water when you, you know, open the, you know, water pipe, uh, here, you know, when you open, you can get to the future. So this is our mission. So we needed to provide such future water uh, to people and uh, future opportunities for people. But in the process, uh, we, uh, we needed to open that, uh, you know, creative uh, sources to people. So that's my opinion. Okay, interesting. Uh, a last question from my side. Yeah. Uh, you're an artist, you mentioned uh, that yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Your, uh, your artwork we've, we've mm. seen, what a, a ghost dreams of. Yeah. Uh, is it easier to go uh, over the border as an artist than as a researcher in a company? Is this an advantage for an artist to say it's more allowed to think well, out of the uh, box? I think the, this is exactly a good question and also the role of art. When I come up with this idea, I didn't want to make any products or services. <laughs> it's clear, isn't it? <laughs> it's not solving anything, you know, maybe solving for you, <laughs> you know, to attract the audience here. But, uh, you know, looking at those, you know, uh, kind of elements, uh, it's not answering to uh, some kind of, you know, uh, you know, problems or something like this. But uh, uh, I think this is a rather more uh, creating questions, right? So I wanted to uh, ask uh, people, broader audience, what's the meaning of AI? You know, what's the, our society? If, you know, surveillance camera and AI is combined together, what's going to be? Uh, what's your dream and uh, what's the meaning of art, for instance? Like, uh, as you saw, final phase together with this cross. So actually, uh, you know, like as Man Ray, you know, made the photography as art. Well, how to utilize art 
is a part of the instrument of creative process. I think this is not like a you know, normal process that, uh, you know, normal traditional businessman practice. But I suppose such kind of creative process will be important because nowadays uh, to be out of the box. So it's the most important because tomorrow, as of today, you might believe this is the future. But tomorrow suddenly it changed. Are you ready for going next? So for doing so, I think to have such kind of mindset, I think uh, artist in company, not just artist in residence, artist in company, artist in governance, uh, government, artist in the you know rat house or whatever. I think such people are definitely needed. So that's a different mindset, attitude, but it's needed for catalyzing for better society. I agree 100 percent. This reminds me a little bit with the uh, direction of future, a great artwork you did a few yes, years yeah. ago with the arrow, yes, yes. which always points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> escaping. <laughs> escaping. <laughs> future and is always different. Future is always escaping, and you cannot say this is the direction we will go exactly. there for the next 10 years, but we have to adjust. Yeah, yeah. We needed to uh, really have such a mindset. Yeah. Uh, what we learned was, of course, you know, important. Uh, but uh, for envisioning the future, it's, uh, uh, it's need a new step that you guys needed to develop it. So in this case, we needed to be brave and uh, we needed to ask, in a way, second opinion <laughs> from artists. Uh, but again, uh, we needed to have such immunity you know, as our own. Wonderful. So no more questions here. So oh, really? <laughs> I think we have answered a lot of things in but advance. Please continue to raise your own questions. <laughs> this is what we have to raise. Uh, and this is what we are doing in the Electronica Center by Genau. interacting with the visitors. Yep. Because this is the interesting thing for us as mm -hmm. the Electronica Center, that we don't want to uh, answer the questions what we have, yeah, but yeah. we want to answer the questions the visitors Genau. bring up. And so this is what our approach is. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for this talk. Thank you very Next much. Next week Thank we will have Inside Future Lab uh, again. Next week it will be on Wednesday, and there will be three uh, slots for Ars Electronica uh, Inside Future Lab. It's uh, with the second co-director uh, of the Future Lab, Roland Haring, and we will take a close look into the Immersify project. And there will be a 8K uh, live stream from Poland. It will be at 11 uh, o'clock. At 12 o'clock, we will uh, take a look inside the, uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza uh, with this great project from the BBC, which the Ars Electronica Future Lab uh, recreated for the deep space. And the third part will be at 1 o'clock, and this will be brand new. It will be an immersive experience uh, from the Stephansdom in uh, Vienna. Hopefully you have time uh, to visit us on our Ars Electronica home delivery for the next Inside Future Lab. Hide, thank you very much thank you for very your much talk for watching. and see you the next time in home delivery. Thank you very much. Thank you.